Hey, it's me, Evil Tutin, and I welcome you back to the hotel if we are still Trilby, and this time... Oh, and by the way, I forgot last episode, I was going to tell a creepy story about... Uh, all about how <laughs> I used to live in a house that also had a creepy door, just like the faux manor uh, with this uh, door, the cellar door. Uh, with the boy behind it, only that my door presumably did not have another boy behind it, although I, can, I, I, I can't confirm or deny, I just can't. And this is a true story, I'm not telling this to freak you out, but there was this one room we used to live, I was, anyway, I'm going to pick up, uh, I'm going to tell it at some point. But first of all, what you want to do is, oh, okay. can we use the word counter again? Oh my god, it, counter, look counter. Look counter and open door. Though those are the two commands in this game. <laughs> there was an unopened bottle of some kind of soft drink sitting on the end table. On the display tables I recognized oh yeah, okay. Take bottle. I took the drink with me. Something told me it would come in useful. Right. Even if you don't know how yet, let's take the paper. I recognized it as being from the same source as the one under the painting in the lobby. Victim 4, the slave. The fourth man who desired judgment was the slave, who had not been brought Freehorn's message, and who tormented the wood that was the prince's soul with a sharpened blade. The prince came to him and he struck the slave down, and he knew the name of the king. And the prince said, Not one of your household shall I, live al shall I leave alive, slave, for... T for thrice now have I brought my warning, and any who still fail to heed shall be named as fool, and judged most unworthy in our sight. Ah, oh, that was a short one. Finally, I've... Oh, it's you, Terry! I thought you might have been the serving staff at last. It's true, there's no one here. Talk a bit. I need to be more specific. <laughs> Alright. Ask a Bitch, Shovan. Where's Shovan? She said she was going to get a drink. I keep telling her it's not right for a girl her age to drink so much. How old is she? But what do I know about young people today? How young is she <laughs> if she's not allowed to drink? Then again, how old is he? I mean, in, in his eyes, everybody must be young. How old is Trilby? I think 30s, maybe? Okay, so let's see if she's here. And she is. Have you seen any of the hotel staff anywhere? I'm afraid not. Hmm. Perhaps they go to bed early in these parts? Well then, this looks like a perfect setup for... You know... The encounter. I mean, she's the... <laughs> I guess just like James Bond movies have... Bond girls, uh, the, the, the faux games always have a trilby girl, so... Talk... Chauvin... Oh no... I, I actually wanted to write... Chauvin! Alright, alright, alright... Well, we could ask her about O'Malley shipping. Does he accept the topic? How are you, Chauvin? Quite alright, and how are you? I can't... I could be better. I can't decide on a... Oh, O'Malley is just her last name. <laughs> so obviously that was... Okay, that was pretty pointless. Ask Shovan about O'Malley shipping. Do you know anything about the history of your family? It wouldn't be much of... I wouldn't be much of a history student if I didn't, now would I? I'm researching my family tree as part of my diploma. That's ideal. I appreciate this may sound like an odd question. It does. But trust me when I say it's important. Did your family run a shipping company in the late 18th century? <laughs> that is an odd question. But I do remember reading something about O'Malley shipping. I'd have to check my notes. I left them in my book bag. Could you meet me in my room in about five minutes? I'm in 2A, next to a bed. Next to a bed. I'm also next to a bed. But I also have a bed in my room. This joke's over. I'm sorry that I dragged it out so long. Let's merge with the painting once more. Come on, I can't get it. Oh, this time I can't get it right. Yes, there we go. 
He stared into painting, and the painting seemed to stare back. What was he thinking? Was he going crazy? All these visions. Who is the tall man? The slave? The child? Who else would desire judgment? Oh, oh my god. I'm sorry, guys. I'm back. I'm back. I just... I, I got lost in the painting for a moment. It's not a painting. This is a painting. I got lost in the picture. Some Andy Warhol... Uh, Andy Warhol-esque. Andy Warhol-esque hell. That's what I was trying to say. Uh, where, where did she say... Oh god, I already forgot. She can't be in one. I two A, two A. Please, please say it was two A. Knock, knock. Knock two A. Yeah, I, <laughs> I almost, I almost. Knock door. Doors open. All right, guys. Oh wait, actually, actually, yeah. I don't want to spoiler, but I have to save here. <laughs> no reason. No reason. It's just you know we shouldn't forget to save. I mean. Not that, that there's no particular reason why I would save. Come in, please, Terry. You have the papers. Must you always get right down to business? Come and sit down. Let's talk. Mm. How are you feeling? We were a little worried about you. I have these moments of illness. What do you want to talk about? The phone banner. Oh. It kind of interests me. I was really into the media coverage of the incident at the time. This client of yours, the one who wants the figurine, what does he know about it? Well, well he has an interest in the, the occult and there's some nonsense story going about it, around it, about, about it. <laughs> Something about the idol being a vessel for an evil ghost. I wasn't really paying attention. Really? I don't remember hearing about that in any of the reports. No, no, you wouldn't have. Uh, it, it wasn't widely... Uh... Have you heard the story that Trilby was in the house? I could feel cold sweat drooling down my spine. Every fiber of my being was concentrating on not giving any outward signs of alarm as Showan spoke of my secret name with wide-eyed enthusiasm. No one believes it, but Simone Taylor insisted it was true right up until... Well, you know... She says she saved her from the house. He saved her. I think that's a little far-fetched. That's exactly what a bet says. He says a ghost is one thing, but throwing Trilby, th <laughs> Trilby into it just makes it seem silly. Truth be told, I don't think a bet believes in Trilby any more than he does in ghosts. He's so grounded in reality. A sensible attitude. Have you, have you always been an antique dealer? Shawan, please. I, I came here to talk about... Let me put that another way. Have you ever been an antique dealer? I knew it. The outfit, the hat, Terry Railby. You're him. You weren't the faux manor. And now you've come here to finish off the ghost. Shawan. I always knew there was something else. In this world, that there was something better, more glamorous just below the surface. Will you take me with you? L listen to me. There's nothing glamorous about what I do. I live in the shadows that threaten to consume me every single day. And if you pursue this any further, you're going to walk straight into one. Wait, what are you talking about? There's something extremely dangerous in the hotel. I don't know what it is, but... Yes. And we fell down. Ooh, wait for it. Wait for it. And it was Shawan. Shawan was out cold but uninjured. She would probably be safe on her bed while I continued my investigation. Really? Well, I don't know about his legs. He looks like a tall guy. But I do know people who have pretty muscular legs and... Getting kicked full force by them wouldn't turn out so pretty, to be honest. So let's just let's just assume. Well, he looks kind of well a little buff. I don't know. I mean, he's a. I don't. I have no idea. He's drawn in pixels. What am I talking about? Now, what we should do is, uh, you know, do the uh, do the morally right thing and uh, check the bag 
of the girl that is knocked out on our bed, on her bed, on her bed. It was a perfectly ordinary student's backpack for carrying books and personal possessions. But she has to be in her 20s, something like that, if she's still a, stu a, stu a, stu a, stu a student. Um, well, can we... Well, she said she had the papers in her bag. Can I not? Under the circumstances, Chauvin probably wouldn't mind. <laughs> yeah, that's true. There were a few textbooks, a half-empty water bottle, and a large folder marked O'Malley Family History. This, I decided, was my quarry. I flipped through the pages until I reached information relevant to the 18th century and read my discoveries out loud. Why? The Liverpool-based O'Malley Shipping Company ran for three generations in the, of the family in the middle in the mid to late 18th century until the loss of one of their clippers drove the company to bankruptcy. She, 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 oh god. I, wa I watched too much anime. The owner at the time, Jacob O'Malley, placed the <laughs> blame somewhat irrationally on a shipping crate which family legend alleged to be haunted and that had been on the ship at the time. And that had been. There are numerous tales of bizarre events surrounding the crate and the story of the crate's origin is no less mysterious. It goes that a strange young man came to a carpenter's at the Liverpool dockyards with a very expensive looking harpsichord, which he insisted he smashed up, be smashed up and would use for whatever purpose the carpenter desired. Ah. He refused to leave until the instrument had been utterly broken into its component parts in front of his eyes and the wood sent to be made into crates for O'Malley shipping. When pressed for his name, the man identified himself as one Jack Freehorn. <gasps> that name came up. And we go there stra straight, straight to Jack Freehorn. July 28th, once again, 1778. So, what trifle have you been wasting your father's money on now, Jack? What does it look like? It looks like a virginal. A harpsichord, actually, in the Flemish style. Oh, quite old, quite expensive. Well, I suppose I should be grateful that something is distracting you from the occult for once. I fear you may be speaking too soon, my friend. Oh god, I should have known. You and your silly obsession. So, what devilry inhabits this magnificent instrument? And the instrument as a whole is for the most part untainted by the ethereal realm. But its keys are what spark my interest. Usually, unusually, they have been carved from centuries-old English oak. And that's the interesting part. I will not be disheartened by that sharp tongue of yours. The wood has gone through many incarnations before being incorporated into this device. Items of furniture, building material, in fact, just over 200 years ago, it was part of a wall. A wall of... A certain inn on the well-traveled road in Wales. The unicorn? I'm so pleased to remember. I could hardly forget it, the way you have been obsessed quite heartily over it lately, uh, 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 of late. Your correspondence persists in filling your head with rubbish about ghosts and demons. I count myself very lucky to have tracked down even a small piece of that hostelry. I know I've already told you some of the wonderful stories attached to it. And this instrument has had its fair share of mysterious happenings. The usual batch of strange noises, sudden madness and inexplicable deaths. See sense, my friend. This curiosity of yours for all things ungodly has no doubt already befouled your immortal soul. You're a fine fellow, Wilbur, but you have not a drop of romance in your body. Now stop browbeating me for inquiring mind and let us take dinner. And here it comes. That night, Jack was stirred from his bed by the sound of music emanating from his new instrument. His first thought was anger, mostly because the harpsichord was an antique, never intended to be played. But then he listened to the haunting melancholy, t me melancholy tune, oh god, and felt his stomach roll inexplicably with fear. Who's down there? Wilbur, is that you? I would be such a great narrator if I if I could just improve my my pronunciation somehow. Okay, check. Oh God, please let it be counter. Oh God, I hope it's counter. Yes, everything is counter in this game. Check.
Jack's desk. Je <clears throat> Jack's desk was covered untidily in letters, notes and papers he had been studying lately. A flintlock pistol given to Jack by his father lay gathering dust atop a pile of correspondence. Well, and we rather... I want to type flintlock instead of pistol. Nice. Well then, should we see who... Uh, who's intruding in late July on our harpsichord? This is actually quite a nice piece of music, so let's listen to it for a moment. And now let's confront him. Time to take out the tall man once and for all. Jack could not take a step further, because he realized with a lurch that he recognized the dark figure that sat at the keys. He had read of this strange entity that recurred frequently in stories surrounding the Unicorn Inn and the objects that were later constructed from its wood. And he knew with absolute certainty that the tall man would destroy him were he not destroyed first. Should we do it? Should we shoot the tall man? You won't take me, demon! But, of course... Once again. Wilbur! No! Oh god, no! But I could have sworn. Sworn. You! I know you! You have. have. Oh god! P please forgive me, your majesty, for my transgressions. I am a worthless craven fool, not worth a second of your precious time. I beg you, spare me. I will redeem myself for my offense. I will be yours forever, my body, mind, and soul. Thank you, my lord. Thank you. Identified himself as one check for Horn. This may well have been the same check for Horn who went to form a bizarre religious cult. A depraved group of paganist worshippers who were spoken of with much derision by conventional society. With my latest flashback, my knowledge of the history of the cursed wood gained another step. Before the crate, it had been a harpsichord, and sometime before the harpsichord, it had been part of some kind of hostelry in Wales. An inn called the Unicorn. Why did that ring a bell somewhere in my recent memory? I had definitely seen something in the Clan Bronwyn Hotel that was linked to the place, but where? Show one. Well, where do you guys think we found something about the hotel? It's obvious, well... <laughs> everything is in the display room, I don't have to spoil anything. So, I'll see you guys next time, uh, when we find out about the history of the unicorn. See you then!